today, videographers was at the photography show. One of the main highlights for us was the Panasonic stand, where we got to talk with Mark Baber about the Panasonic Lumix GH4. Hi, I'm Mark Baber. I'm the technical product manager for Lumix G cameras for Panasonic here in the UK. And we're at the UK uh, photo show up in Birmingham. This is the final day we're here. And I've got the GH4, brand new GH4, the, one of the first consumer cameras to shoot 4K. Uh, and that's uncompressed as well. So we have eight samples here at uh, the show. And they're the only eight samples from here to Japan. So basically, uh, you've got just a few hours a day to come and see it. And uh, it's a fantastic piece of kit. So the GH4 is uh, brand new for Panasonic. It uh, stands alongside the GH3, uh, which is currently still part of our uh, roadmap for 2014. So the GH4 is the first consumer cam camera to shoot 4K. So on the outside, there's some differences that you will see between this and the GH3. First is the mode dial. Now the mode dial has a lockable uh, mechanism so that will uh, keep that in place so you're out in the field or uh, shooting, uh, you'll rest assured that that's not going to move in accordance to what you're actually uh, selected. It still has a magnesium body and uh, that's a magnesium alloy body which is splash proof and dust proof. So you've got a really good premium feel in the hand. So we have all the buttons along the top, which is white balance, ISO, and also compensation exposure. So you can change that. You can also customize it. So you've got buttons at the front, buttons at the back to sh alter shutter speed and also aperture. The current battery grip for the GH3 and uh, the battery itself will fit this camera as well. So there's a continuation of that stock. Now it's a four thirds mount, so that's micro four thirds, and it's a mirrorless system. So it's a brand new sensor in the, in the uh, GH4 made by Panasonic. So what that enables you is full edge-to-edge -edge clarity resolution when you're shooting both in stills and video. Now using our AV uh, knowledge and technology, we've made the viewfinder a 2.36 OLED viewfinder. We've also made the LCD screen uh, view, uh, OLED as well. That's 1.04 dot resolution. So really clean, uh, a good refresh rate and accurate color reproduction. So it's absolutely ideal when you're actually shooting out in the field and you want to use the uh, viewfinder uh, to shoot with. It's also got a larger eye cut, so compared to the GH3, it's a little bit more comfortable and actually wider when you're shooting. So it really works well when you bring it up to your eye. Okay, so we've made some improvements to our autofocus um, system in the camera. So basically the GH4 has inbuilt information about every lens that Panasonic, Panasonic has created. So it basically adjusts, uh, estimates what's out of focus. So it selects two points out of focus and then estimates the distance between the lens and the actual uh, subject you're shooting. Contrast AF then kicks in. So what it actually does, it reduces any hunting or warbling. Uh, this camera is a pre-release sample, but it does really work uh, quite convincingly when shooting. So I'm gonna select here the different AF modes. So first of all, not only do we still have face detection, we also have within face detection, eye detection. So it will actually track people's eyes to keep them in focus for portrait. We've got now 49 area, which actually selects the different areas of the screen, up to 49 areas. And then you can actually customize that. So if I select a point here, I can actually keep that in focus, or I can select any other area of the 49 area. Just come out of that. But what's really impressive is if I now select one touch focus, I can move this square anywhere around the screen. So I've got near, near enough 100% feel of view. Once I'm happy with that, I depress the shutter. But now, because the interface unit is out of focus, if I now actually touch that, it focuses with really, really fast speed of around 0.06 seconds. Again, if I don't want to actually focus on that, I could go back over here. And if I want to make that actually smaller, I can, if I want to make it actually bigger and get more in focus in the screen, I can actually do that as well. So Lumix G was established in 2008 for Panasonic and we have the same four thirds sensor as another uh, manufacturer, Olympus. So what that means is that both Olympus and Panasonic lenses can be used on this camera. Now in the Panasonic range we currently have 22, but we have a number of lenses in development of different focal lengths and different sizes. So within those 22 lenses we have things like macro, we have wide angles, 7 to 14. Um, and because it has a crop factor of 2 over full frame, a 7 to 14 mil lens, for example, is the equivalent of 14 to 28. So obviously a lot smaller, but the same focal length without any compromise in picture quality. And again, because it's mirrorless, there's no uh, 
mirror box or prism actually in the camera. So these cameras can actually shoot silently. There is no noise whatsoever. And you can also control the camera with your iPhone or your Android device. So any smartphone technology that you can download the Panasonic image app, which means up to 20 meters, I can take my smart device and actually have full remote control over the camera of every element that I want to use. So with silent shooting and remote shooting, you can rest assured that you're still going to get some fantastic pictures and video. Okay, so we've made some improvements with the GH4 out of body, so the SD card slot is a lot more sturdier inside, obviously, as an SD card. But to shoot 4K, you really do need a fast uh, SD card. Now, we've made, uh, we're making these in development as well. This is a U3 uh, card, 10, uh, uh, class 10, 16 gig. Now, they do go up to 64 gig, and as you can see, they write at 45 megabits, which is roughly around two, well, over 240 megabits a second. So uh, you need that kind of speed for 4K. So as well as uh, the SD card slot, there's the remote access here, if I turn it around. Wi-Fi and NFC, so if you do have an NFC device, you can just tap it onto the side and it will make a connection. Uh, this camera does not necessarily need Wi-Fi connection. You could be out in the middle of, say, the Amazon and actually just use your device peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, when you do find in internet connection afterwards, you can actually then uh, upload your photographs uh, to uh, an external device, save it to the smart device, or actually uh, social, use social media to tweet or uh, use Facebook if you were going to do something like that. That includes video. Then on the right-hand side, we have the mic, compact, uh, mic input, and then we also have the jack, and we also have the USB composite and HDMI micro uh, connections as well. So this is the new interface uh, unit that uh, is sold separately to GH4. And if you can find these two together, you'll be able to get uncompressed 422 10-bit 4K video, which is quite astonishing for a consumer camera. So let's have a look around the actual unit. It's powered by XLR, so that's 12 volt. And at the same time then, you have professional inputs XLR for sound. You've also then got four SDI slots, so they're individually uh, full HD, which makes 4K, and also one for time code. So let's just take a look at the micro HDMI input. So this goes into the actual GH4, and you have a lockable mechanism here that will actually keep that in place, so you can rest assured that's not going to come out. And then here is the HDMI uh, output for uncompressed 422 10-bit clean 24p cinema 4K, uh, and also live view monitor out. Around the back, you'll have LED indicators and the opportunity to actually control your sound. You've got two connections, so this fits uniquely to the GH4. And then on the back, you've got tripod and rigging mounts around the side. So a very, very uh, diverse and uh, quite, quite an impressive interface. This is a 35 to 100 lens. Um, now, it's actually at its extended uh, angle here. So if I extend it to 100, you can see nothing pops out because the mechanism and the elements of the lens are actually moving inside. But in 35 mil terms, uh, this is a 70 to 200 lens, which obviously would be a lot bigger and would have probably a lot more glass in it as well. We're really, really proud to be able to show you here quite exclusively a brand new lens that we're actually looking at uh, developing. We have a mock-up sample here, which I've got. So 35 to 100 currently, but this is the advantage of mirrorless systems. This is a new lens that we're actually working on. This is the other 35 to 100. So if you actually put that together, now, one thing I forgot to actually mention is they're both 2.8 uh, aperture throughout. So our technicians in Japan are really, and engineers are really working hard to actually take advantages of more of the mirrorless system and actually produce some really lightweight lens, again, without uh, any uh, compromise in picture quality. And this is the new Leica uh, Sumilux 15mm. So this is the 30mm equivalent. So it's got a, an aperture ring. You've also got AF and MF uh, within the actual uh, camera itself. Premium metallic body, so this fits perfectly on any of our uh, range of cameras. Uh, so actually, you know, some, not just in development, but this will be released this year. So very bright, very fast, and has an aperture of 1.7. So as well as shooting, uh, obviously, 4K, the camera can shoot right down to VGA. But what's really important to get across now is that if you were to shoot a film for a client or, uh, or yourself out in the States, 
uh, and to be play played back on a, a say a North American television you'd have to buy a uh, Panasonic G uh, in that country well not anymore what you can do now is actually select the region so if I want to actually shoot in NTSC I can or in Europe PAL or if I actually want to shoot the highest quality 4k in cinema so let me just show you that if we select 50 Hertz and we actually go up to the video mode so let's select the video mode go back in you can see now I can shoot ABC HD MP4 MP4 with uh, compressed sound or MOV MOV so let's say MOV and let's now go within that and as you can see I can shoot 4k 100 megabits 25p full HD all intra 200 megabits 50p and so on and so on it goes on and on so as you can see Panasonic are way ahead of the game with this one here at Videographers UK, we can't wait to get our hands on one.